Good evening. I Rapstein, and here we are with your metal market wrap up. And this wrap up is for the evening of Monday, the 9th of January, 2023. First announcement I will be here tomorrow, but I'm not going to be here Wednesday, Thursday, or on the weekend. All right. Birthday, my wife taking me out of town, so I'll be gone for just those days. For my paid subscribers, I intend on putting out your morning updates for you and the other updates as best I can. I normally can get to the morning updates, so that should be no change for you. It's these that I have to be in the studio for, and obviously, if I'm on the road, I can't be in my studio. And by the way, I hope you like the new lighting. Flesh color's been improved. Voices improved. We, we put quite a few new uh, pieces of equipment in right at the beginning of the year. And you should see an impact in the morning and the subscriber video. We just installed another piece of equipment literally 30 minutes ago. So that should help that. Uh, the services are growing and it's all because of you and I appreciate it. So many of you have gotten smart. You take the morning subscriber videos. You write me if you have certain questions. I try to answer them as subs uh, subscribers as best as my time will allow. And away we go. And I do quite a few. I devote a certain amount of time every day for my paid subscribers. Subscribers. So if they'll ask me a question on uh, metals as an example or a spider, a stock, whatever, I'll sometimes create a video for them and send it right to them. That is part of the service that I try to deliver. So here's what I've been looking for and here's where we're at. Where we're at on things is we had that rush in the market. We're trying to get our first five days up tonight of the, of the year. I wrote about the January effect, the January uh, scenarios that can come about. I've already seen Tom Lee from FactSet come on today on CNBC. He is calling for a 20% increase in the stock market because of this, even more in the NASDAQ by the end of the year. But he's also the guy that called for $500,000 now in Bitcoin that never happened. Don't get me wrong. What a lot of people do, unfortunately, is they come out with grandiose statements and it gets them on TV. And that's part of what you do. And if you have a big enough following, it just goes, ah, so he makes those statements. I still like his general work. And I think Tom is a good technician. He brings out a lot of very good things. However, I think it's pretty hard in any market to make that statement. In addition, the January effect, as they like to call it, you've got to first look. One is the five-day impact, the first five days of the year. Then the other is from January 1st to January 31st. Then you go back and you also look at years where it didn't work. Now, on the first impact, the first five days, it's got over an 80% probability, which means it's about a 25 or a 20%, 15% probability it won't work. Always keep that in the back of your mind. Now, where are we on everything else? What happened today in the marketplace is pretty simple. The market got its big impact and all of a sudden the Fed members are coming out and each one that is coming out is saying, no, they're not agreeing. They think the interest rates have to go up to at least 5% and stay there for quite a while. That took some of the air out of the market and you started pulling back. The biggest problem I've been having is writing my newsletter and telling my subscribers that, hey, the hardest thing to do is you watch some of these markets move and then you want to jump in. And before you know it, you jumped in at the wrong spot. You've got to keep your trading disciplines. If you don't, this game will bust your account. That doesn't mean that if you wait for the right time to come in, you're still going to have a winning trade. It means you can control the risk a lot different than just jumping in. I'm giving you years of experience. You don't have to believe me, but I've seen it. I do it. I experience it. And that's where that goes. Next, we have to look at what's going on with uh, Congress. First off, tonight, there's going to be another vote. And what the House is trying to do is say, no, we're not going to give $80 billion for new IRS members to go out and, uh, if you will, put out more checks and balances on the American public. They can pass that. Doesn't mean the Senate will take it up. That's part of the problem. So got to see where all these things end up. But it was the first day of uh, the Congress working. Mr. McCarthy did make a headway. All right. He got his rules passed. And tonight they'll see what they get with votes. I hate the impact of any one member 
can call for his, the end of his reign and call votes on him. Do you think that's right? It doesn't seem right to me. I can't believe he gave that up. All right, let's take a look at what we have. As you can see, gold for the week is up a quarter of a point. As we take a look at what the market's doing, it's still in a nice gradual uptrend. I think that's easy to see. And the pattern has been a very stable, higher lows and higher highs. That will stay in place, I think, until the dollar puts on a strong rally, which I'm not expecting anytime soon, by the way. Yes, rallies, but a real reversal, why? That becomes the first issue. The government has got the world convinced, all right, that they're going to keep going with interest rates until they don't go. Remember, at the end of the day, our Fed chair keeps mentioning Paul Volcker. And as long as he keeps mentioning him, what he's saying is he doesn't want the legacy that Mr. Volcker had of pulling the plug too soon on high rates only to have to go back in and do the whole thing again. He remembers it. It isn't going to happen under his watch. You don't have to believe me, but I'd bet against those that think he'll pull the plug earlier and the pressure will be on him from other members. I don't think he'll give in. This is his last term. He won't. That's my bet. He won't do it. He doesn't want to have the next guy talking about Jerome Powell pulled the plug too soon. When we take a look at moving averages, the market's over them, and we had a bullish crossover, and the market has made new highs ever since that occurred. But you are over the upper Bollinger Band. I'm going to repeat this, and I'm going to keep repeating it all year. If you haven't taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course and learned how to work, with momentum and Bollinger Band together, not just the Bollinger Band, do so. You will have your two hands on bear moves, bull moves, and you'll understand things. It tries to keep you out of a problem. Buying over a Bollinger Band, I will never tell a client to do. You can generally come into the market at a better price under it. In addition, the market only stays over those bands 5% of the time in aggregate. When you look at momentum, you're overbought. You're not embedded. So I see an overbought market begging for a correction. I have no idea what will bring it about, but it, they happen. And when it happens, I will look to see, do you keep or develop an embedded reading, or do you correct this? Now, to correct it means a price break. The logical support is wherever the 18-day uh, average comes in. Right now, it's 18.28 and a half, which is just slightly under 18.29.90, the last break low. But give this another day or so, and that number will climb above that. And wherever that comes in, I think will be the logical support in the market. When I look at the gold-silver ratio, it's moving out, which means silver still losing to gold. And you see that right here. What else did I tell you a week ago? I said, when you got this formation, or it was back here, I said, you want to stay away from silver. Why? Because this is the kind of formation where you make false moves up and down as the market's really taking price pressure and spinning it in there, getting ready for whatever that next move is going to be. This is not the place to be. In the copper market, notice that we have a four in front of prices. I'm, I believe you will get a five in front of prices, very possibly later this year. When everybody, everybody being China's already done at the US, Europe, when we see the end of the daylight at the end of the year, next year, where we're coming out of recessionary pressures, this is the market that comes alive. Why? Because it's used in everything. I mean, everything. You have anything electrical, you're basically using copper in it. Are we producing more of it? No. Are there problems of getting production locked up out of Chile and Peru? Yes. Just remember what I'm saying there. That's what I believe. This move out over the upper bowl in Japan, I'll let somebody else want to own it up there. In the platinum market, are we going to embed here is the question. You can't count tonight's numbers because we don't know where Tuesday's going to finish up. But we know for Monday, both numbers were over 80. We know both numbers were over 80 on Friday. They weren't the day before. So tomorrow tells me if we embed. And if we embed, for those of you that understand the enhanced Bollinger Band course, we activate certain signals and a certain method of acting in the market. 
In the palladium market, you can see the battleground is right through here, the 18-day average. The trend is flipped to the upside unless and until you take out this low, and I believe that's 17.35 if I'm correct. Let's just check that. Yeah, 17.35. So until that's taken out, the pros are probably, word is probably buying tonight. If they get to 17.62, which stops under that number, if that's taken out, you just got to restart again. But that's the first time you've had a smaller number to work with in the Palladium market. And in the dollar index, this is too big of a break. You're now under the Bollinger Band, you're getting oversold. Again, I think you're gonna get stuck into a narrower range of the Bollinger Band. You got up and over it, challenged the 200 day average of closes, bang, sucker trap. Those that bought it up there, they didn't live through that at all. Gotta learn how to work with these things. How often do I tell you? The combination of Bollinger Bands and key moving averages, gotta learn how to work with those. So you put it together and there's a plan. But I was laughing today is I was sitting at my computer running pivot points and I'm going, my God, look at how many of these things there are and we're at work all day long. Now, what a pivot point is, is simple. You have it in your charting software if you have a, a, a software package that is worth its meat. It's that simple. It finds by looking at the previous day, there's a formula a midpoint. Then above that, it's going to add sell numbers and buy numbers below it. What I do is I tie in the slow stochastics using my formula in slow stochastics with it. And I'm looking for a couple of things. While a lot of people use that for day trading, and it's very popular for day trading, and I teach you how to do that in my free course. The word is free for a lot of you out there. What it also does is help you work with the market and try to generate, hey, here's an entry point that you have over your other techniques. Maybe I adjust it a little to, to get that into it. You know, do I adjust very often? I don't, but I'm always on the lookout, especially if I want to own something long or short in a real bad way. I'll take a look at this to try to get a bit of an edge. There's nothing worse than missing something by a few ticks. This gives me the courage to make maybe those changes. So how do you get all this? Well, as I said, it's free. All you need to do is go to our website at www.irapstein.com. And in there, and this is very, very simple, and in there, go to the free offers and it's all there. Uh, if this is working, we've had some trouble with our uh, TubeBuddy, and that works on these. Uh, there'll be an icon at the very top. Give it a click and that'll take you to the same spot. But I've given you the secret. You can also call my staff during the day. They'll be happy to get this while you're on the phone. They'll get it right to you. So you can't get it any quicker than that. I'm I Rapstein. You have a good one. I will talk to you all tomorrow. I will be here tomorrow. And then, as I said, I'll be gone for the next three days and then right back. You take care.